What's up guys, today we're gonna talk about QPromise library which is available on NPM as Q module. In the previous video we talked about ES6 promises in Node.js. So we can also use Q module to promiseify our async operations. So let's see how we can create promises using Q module. So first we are requiring the Q module and then we are calling the differ method on that which returns a differed object and once we have the differed object we can access the promise and once we have the promise we can call the then method where we specify the own fulfill function which will be called when the promise is resolved and we specify our own rejection handler for the promise inside the catch so this deferred object also have these two methods resolve and reject where we can resolve the promise or we can reject the promise so currently we are resolving the promise with a string value of awesome so if i run this file uh, it should print this console.lag because we are resolving the promise with this value so let's execute this file so node q.js so we want to run q.js so we got got awesome so if i reject this promise we will get this error printed because we are uh, rejecting the promise and in that case on rejection handler will be called so let's reject the promise so it should print error something bad happened so if i run now it printed the error something bad happened so one very important thing to note about this promise library is no matter how you create your promise once you have a promise you can call the then function where you specify your own fulfill function which will be called when the promise is resolved so let's add some async code in our promise and execute some requests to our endpoint so this is q2.js where we are using the http module uh, to make the http request to the endpoint everything remains the same so we are calling the q.differ to get the different object and inside this http request if uh, the status code is less than 200 or greater than 299 it means it was not a successful uh, request so in that case we are rejecting the promise and if we get the end event fired which means our response is done and we in that case we just resolve the promise and we pass it that value which will be available here for us inside this on fulfill function and if any error happens during the request we are again rejecting the promise and then we are returning the promise so when we call the get promise we will get the promise and once we get the promise we can call the then function on that where we specify the own fulfill function and to uh, to handle the errors which will uh, to handle the errors which will be fired when the rejection happens for the promise uh, this catch function where we specify the own rejection handler will be called and it will print out the error so let's just execute this file q2.js and it should give us uh, the response for this request because this request will return a status code of 200 in in that case we are uh, resolving the promise when the uh, response is done so let's just execute this file node q2.js and it just prints out the response and if i make a bad request this sh should result in rejection of a promise that we are doing here it should return a uh, because this endpoint will return a 404 in in that case we are rejecting the promise and that will result in this on rejection function uh, to be executed and it will print out the error so if i execute now we got our error which is status code 404 and it just print out that error because we are throwing that error here so now let's make uh, multiple requests so we will chain this then so we will call get promise and that will return multiple uh, different promises and then we will chain those promises so in q3.js we are chaining these promises so we are calling the get promise uh, passing this URL which will return a promise and when this returns a promise and when this uh, promise is resolved it will call this function where we are just printing out the response from the first request and then we are returning another promise and when that promise is resolved then this function will be called 
where we are printing the response from that request and we are returning another uh, promise and when that promise will be resolved and then this uh, on fulfill function will be called and we are here we are just printing out the data that we got after resolving that last promise so if now I execute key3.js you will see all these responses printed so let's just clear out and just execute node q3.js so we got response 1 response 2 and response 3 and if any error happens in between any of these uh, requ requests that will result in rejecting that promise and in that case this on rejection handler will be called so if we make a request say we make we make request here and rather than passing this country from the previous uh, request we can pass some country that we don't support currently so I will pass here uh, which country I support we don't have so I will pass here uh, CA for Canada so you will see now that first response will be printed but the second response will not be printed this will result uh, because this will result in rejection of a promise and that uh, the method that we specified in the inside catch on rejection handler that will be called so our first response was printed but then it resulted in the rejection of a promise and it just printed out the error so I will make it change it back so this is how promises work uh, so no matter which library you use and how you create your promises once you have a promise you can access the then function where you specify your success handler which will be called when the promise is resolved so in the next one we will talk about the bluebird library to promisify our async operations